thank you everyone for coming to the first ever uh, Libre graphics track here at Scale. Um, how many of you have ever read a good GIMP tutorial on the internet? Awesome, then the man standing here probably needs no introduction at all. Uh, GIMP team member Pat David is gonna talk to us about why the GIMP team clearly hates all of you. Apparently, I did need an introduction. Hi, I'm Pat David. How's everybody's afternoon going? Not so bad. I'm glad to see so many faces out here. This is the inaugural, inaugural Libre Graphics track here at Scale. So I hope we've had some good presentations so far for you guys today. Mine is from the GIMP team and was specifically titled to get you in the room. And it's why so many of you GIMP users that are out there, are there very many GIMP users out there now? Show of hands, who does use GIMP-ish? Yeah, all right. Photoshop? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Full disclosure, I don't think I've ever really opened it. Tried to think through it last night, and I don't know that I have. Hey, why the GIMP team uh, obviously hates you, which is something as, and I've, I've been a member, I'm Pat David, that's me, by the way. Anybody ever been to meetthegimp.org? No, Rolf Steinort, he wrote a bunch of tutorials. Really super nice German guy. He's had a video podcast for years on how to do fun GIMP stuff. Uh, he took this photo of me at a, in a Ratzkeller in, in Leipzig, Germany at Libre Graphics in 2014. I'm a member of the GIMP team now, and I guess I have been for a, a few years, I guess five, six, seven years, something along those lines. Um, if you've been to, everybody been to the website, www.gimp.org? Okay, that was, that's mine. I, I made that for the team most recently. Um, and that's kind of the thing that I've been doing for them. I don't really develop for the project, so I'm gonna be covering a couple of things that are important to me as a photographer, but I may not know the complete and utter details of. So I will do my best to answer any questions, but I may defer to somebody else with more knowledge than me, right? So we don't hate you. In fact, if you've ever spent any time around the GIMP developers themselves and the team, they're actually a ridiculously gracious and kind bunch of people. They're super nice, they're super accepting. Nobody cares who you are other than that you be nice to others and try to help if you can. And it's, it's quite pervasive among the uh, team in general of trying to be helpful um, and I'll talk about who those team members are a little bit later because it's, uh, it's sad how few of them there really are. But why do people have that perception? I think Ryan did a fantastic job in his presentation a moment ago, just before mine, that I'm sure everybody was here for, right? right. Yeah. Good. Covering why we have some of the issues we have with users and their perceptions of free software and being able to use it for tasks that are important. And I think there's a few different reasons, particularly for the GIMP project. One of those is that the user interface and user experience overall for using the software is not as polished as we'd like. This isn't because we hate you. Yes. That's what everyone thinks. I think I've heard the, user, the UI called hostile to users on, on multiple occasions, and it's a very fun word to use when describing software. But, you know, it, we want to do cool things. We want to do great widgets. We want to do better user interaction and experience with the software for conducting tasks. But again, I'll show you in, in a little while. At the very end of this, you're going to realize that literally there are six people working at night after their full-time job. And that's mostly it for the GIMP crew. And it's a ridiculous amount of downloads and user base to have to be supported by six people after work trying to hack and answer questions. We are ridiculously understaffed. So we want to do these cool UI UX things that are asked of us a lot. We really want to. We just don't have the manpower or time yet. And I'll talk about that a little bit later too. And part of that problem that people have about GIMP being hostile is that a lot of the workflows uh, in proprietary software are slick, right? Anybody want adjustment layers in GIMP? 
Anyone know what they are? Anyone not know kind of what, what I mean when I say adjustment layers? I'm happy to talk about them. If I make a change to any layer in the stack in GIMP or in Photoshop, um, maybe I, I, I put a curve, I mean, a little tone curve to it. Um, and then I might have 10 or other image layers above that that all reflect against it in some way. If I want to go back and change that tone curve on that 10th layer at the bottom of the stack, an adjustment layer lets me go back to that and change that curve as it exists. And all the changes will bubble up through the image stack to your final image. And if you've ever done any advanced image processing, you want that. Right? We don't have it at the moment in GIMP, but you really want that. So that's a great example of where you look at a workflow in proprietary software like <laughs> adjustment layers and say that is the smart solution to the problem. And then you look at the two people that work three nights a week, two hours after they get off work and say, why don't you do that? Right? Part of the other perception is, and again, I've only been with the team for maybe six, I guess about six or so years now, is that communication with the team is often not um, easy, right? Most of the devs are only accessible in the IRC chat room. You can go to our Bugzilla, but Bugzilla hurts to use sometimes. It's not the most intuitive thing to use. And the discussions that go back and forth are often cumbersome. So it's hard to casually report a bug or feature request and to articulate it without having to use what seems to users to be archaic methods of communication, right? We're working on that, I promise, and I'll talk about that a little bit later too. And this is probably the single biggest reason people think that we hate them, and it's because we're not Photoshop, right? Um, and I don't have anything to say to that. We're not Photoshop. If you dig through the history of the project, you'll find a quote from 20 years ago that says we were originally trying to clone some of the features in Photoshop from 20 years ago. That hasn't really been the GIMP's position for 19 and a half years, right? But we're not. And again, those adjustment layers are good examples. Photoshop certainly serves as an example when you have lots and lots of money and lots and lots of developers and UI experts and UX experts. You can come up with these great workflows that specifically meet some particular person's needs. And that's great. It'll serve as a great example for that. But it's not a target for us. As Ryan pointed out earlier, if we're looking for parity, we're always behind the curve. We're not really looking for parity, right? But we do acknowledge that there are quite a few things that would make a lot of our users happier if we could do it. And what we see are things like different levels of frustration amongst the users. I've broken them down into roughly what I think are roughly three general areas of frustration. One, you need to do a thing, but it's a different button or a command name. And it, it annoys you. If you're an advanced user, you know better than this. But imagine a brand new user that just wants to sharpen a picture. You know, maybe, I don't know what it is in photo. Is there like a, a sharpen filter in Photoshop? You just say image sharpen or something like this? So there's like an image sharpen. It, it, we kind of have that in GIMP, not as much. It's not very good either. There's better ones that are not called image sharpen, right? Unsharp mask, wavelet, et cetera. Um, so people get frustrated. It's a different button than what they're accustomed to. Or it's a different workflow or process. This one's a lot more painful. It can be done. The thing you want can be done. But you're going to have to go around a different path to get there. And at some point, you get mad and say, this is shit. I can't do this. I, th I shouldn't have to do this. No, well, OK. I might concede that. That's a different conversation. But the reality is you can do what you need to. It just requires you to get there in a different path, right? And then uh, this is actually the nastiest of the levels of frustration for, for a user. It's when it just plain can't be done, straight up. And there's a few things that, that, uh, that, that that's a truth, unfortunate, right? And it also makes it problematic for the GIMP team when they try to help folks out because our user base is huge. Blender is a 3D compositing and modeling and animation software. It happens to have some image and video compositing capabilities as well as part of their pipeline, right? Inkscape is a vector image or vector editing software, right? Um, GIMP covers digital artists, photographers, animators, sketchers, people that want to make banners for their form signatures, a huge gamut of folks. And unfortunately, the number of those users in each one, if it's a real mundane task, we have a huge number of people. You know, I want to put a funny text over my images and make a meme. It's a lot of those. People really using GIMP as part of a professional level photographic workflow, not as many people, right? But it's a huge span of people. And so things that are important to you, 
as a digital texture artist for 3D modeling are very different than ones for me as a photographer. Did I say I was a photographer earlier at all? I might not have. I'm a photographer generally. That's how I would self-identify, I guess. Right? And part of Somewhere in there? Appreciate that. Um, other frustrations that folks have uh, is an apparent lack of progress. It doesn't help that it's been seven years since a major release of GIMP. I think it's somewhere in that neighborhood, I think. It might be six. 2012, 2012 was 2.8.0. We talked about that the other night. That's right. That's going to change. This actually has already started changing in the project. I'll talk about that at the very end. But this is a frustration for users. When they look and see 2.8 and 2.8 has been sitting around since 2012, the feeling is that there's a lack of progress in the project or that it's dead or that we hate you, which is something to take away from. But there's not. We actually have had quite a bit of interesting progress. If you haven't had a chance to track it, sit back. I'm about to spend the next 30 slides showing that to you. Some of them are neat, though, and there's a lot more photos than what you're seeing up till now, right? So a quick preview of what you can expect in 2.10 so that you know we're pretty far along the 2.9 developer series in GIP right now. We're looking at a 2.10 release probably when it's done. And um, there's a lot, a load of features in 2.9 especially. And it's stable enough for daily use, especially for me. And I think a lot of photographers use it no problem for three years now, something like this, right? So what are we looking at in the 2.10 preview, which you'll be seeing soon when it's done? Uh, a lot more customization of the user interface. The icon themes are going to be separate from the UI. There'll be new icon themes, especially for high DPI work, um, and all, all kinds of new theming for what it looks like. That's what GIMP looks like now. This is very different than you might have been used to in 2.8 in the past now, right? This is one of the dark themes, but and that's actually a, a photograph of mine that I it's nice that Alex put that on there. That's a symbolic icon theme that you're seeing on the left over there now, right? It looks more professional because it's dark gray, not light gray. <laughs> hey, guess what? We do high bit depth color. Anyone wanted high bit depth color and knew what it was? 1632 bit and actually 64 bit FITS files. That's an astronomy thing that the NASA JPL folks needed. Um, so we do 16 and 32 bit integer and float. <coughs> Uh, for the images, the internal pipeline is 16-bit float, I want to say. I think the internal pipeline to Gaggle is 16-bit float. Uh, we can read and write 16-bit uh, pings, 16 and 32-bit TIFFs, Photoshop files to the PSDs, and then EXR, extended range files for HDR imaging and things like that, right? And we have full linear and perceptual uh, uh, tone response curves for when you're working. Uh, the gamma perceptual is the gamma corrected one. That's the one you've been used to. Linear is the one that's right. Did anyone see the video quite a while back about why color mixing is wrong in digital art? Anyone see that? Like you have like a gradient of red and a gradient of green and where they overlap, it should not be black. But it does get dark. That's what happens in a perceptual gamma corrected mode. But in linear mode, the math is actually correct. All right? So it's that, that thing has been fixed in GIMP. So if anyone points you to that YouTube video, it's been fixed in 2.9 for a while. We have a full set of color management now for the entire workflow um, inside of GIMP. These screenshots will be in uh, Cyrillic because I stole them from Alexander Prokodin, if anyone knows him. He's the other GIMP PR writer for Libre Graphics World. Um, and I was too lazy to go rebuild his screenshots. So Russian interface, but you get the idea, right? That, that, that if you can't read Russian, come on. These are all the new color management. So we have full sets of color management um, through little CMS2 at the moment, and it's actually going to be switched to Babel for faster uh, color management transforms. 80 Gaggle-based filters. Anyone know what Gaggle is? Gaggle is the back end for GIMP now. All of the filters and image manipulation pipeline passes through uh, the Gaggle system all the way down. Right? This is a system from Rhythm and Hughes. A, uh, uh, FX Studio that had started creating it years and years and years ago, but ended up open sourcing it. Pippin, or even Colas, is the one that manages the Gaggle pipeline now. Gaggle's, this Gaggle is the thing that's going to give you adjustment layers. Because in Gaggle itself, everything is non-destructive. That's the thing that's going to give us non-destructive adjustment layers uh, in three point something, right? 
full on-canvas previews. Anyone ever do a blur of an image? You have to set all the parameters in GIMP and then hit apply and then wait while it blurs an image, right? Now, as you move those sliders in the, in the, in the blur dialog, it will blur the image in the background for you. And, you know, having those 80 different filters in Gaggle mean that we can do some cool things. These are to this is actually the Mantuic tone mapping operator being applied to an EXR image in GIMP. Basically, I'm tone mapping a high dynamic range image uh, right from within GIMP using a, a pretty standard tone mapping operator, right? Split previews, so you can actually split and see what the effect of the filter is on one side versus what the original was. This is, a, this is working right now on Canvas previews. A full set of improved tools for people that like to do uniform transform tool, you know, you just can randomly skew and warp and stretch and perspective stretch your Canvas. Those are all fast and available uh, on the Canvas right now. I can actually, and by the way, I know these are all screenshots. I'm going to work through these as fast as I can, but if anyone wants to see any of these, I actually have it on my GIMP uh, locally. I can certainly show it to you. It's, those are very slick. The warp transform, that would have been eye warp in the past. This is something that, you know, high fashion photographers love. Pinch, move, make the waist a little smaller, make the shoulders a little broader, make the muscles look a little bigger. That's the tool. That's all done through Gaggle now right on the... Uh, and foreground select, if anyone ever had to do a foreground select previously, it sucked. Uh, the Madden alpha matting operator for doing fine selects. Basically, I have a photo of a, of a person standing against some trees in the background. I want to cut them out of the tree image. The new foreground select tools will do a much better job of selecting all those fine hairs or leaves or what have you for objects that you want to remove from the image. Canvas rotation and flipping, painting with different blend modes. So for artists that like to paint, in Sketch, you can actually rotate the canvas now in any arbitrary angle of rotation while you sketch. We have a fully integrated search now. This was a result of a project from about two years ago. One of the things I liked about Blender was I wanted to go add an object in Blender. I could just hit a key and start typing what I think that object is, like light, and I could get or directly from a drop-down menu what that object is to add. We have that now in GIMP. So if you're looking for a command, you can literally type forward slash and start typing uh, unsharp and your unsharp mask will come up right away. You can select it and begin working correctly. It's a very nice, quick, fast, and easy method for getting at some of these filters. Oh, that's another photo of mine. And so full customization and usability. A lot of enhancements to the widgets uh, that you're going to be interacting with on a daily basis. If you haven't tried 2.9, I highly recommend this. This is all stuff that's been in 2.9 for years already, a couple of years at least, most of it. Um, with Gaggle, we were able to fully parallelize a lot of the processing filters, so we sped up a lot of stuff. It's thread safe for reading and writing, and we're working on parallelizing the compositing of the layer masks in the stack. Right now, we don't. So, but for filters, you add a, a Gaussian blur, colorize, hue shifts, what have you. It's all fully parallelized now. On canvas gradients editing, you see all the pick points there are actually gradient points. If you're creating gradients, you can actually. There's a live update, so as I move the uh, anchors around, it'll, it'll pull a gradient around for me right on the canvas preview while I'm working. Because of the new blend fun framework that we recently got into, we have many more of the normal compositing modes that we would have expected. There's 10 new blending modes, pass through, linear light, burn in, vivid lights, pin light, Did anyone know any of these? Exclusion. If you don't, you will. These have been in some other imaging software for a long time, uh, but now we've got a pretty complete list of, of um, Blending modes, color labels, and layer attributes. So this is actually the new, this is actually a new layer dialog now. So we have full tagging, color tagging for layer creation. So you can tag layers by color or name, uh, and then the different kinds of blending modes. The legacy ones are still there, of course, and then all of the new ones as well. We have some improved Photoshop file support now. We can do things like full pass through uh, support on large and complex Photoshop files. I don't remember who it is that's working on that but they keep working on it. So we can, we're having a much better import uh, for Photoshop, coming from Photoshop. Kind of writing to it, but that's a different story. Now, uh, we have a full set of raw importing now. In the past, we used uh, UF raw. Anyone remember using UF raw back in the day, importing a raw file in the GIMP? Uh, UF raw hasn't really been updated. Now, you can use Darktable or raw therapy table, raw therapy, wonderful projects. When you go to open a raw file directly from GIMP, you get a, this is, this window that you're seeing here is actually Darktable. 
So you get a full Darktable instance fired up to make your adjustments, modify your raw file, get it all going, and say, bring it on in. And we're not far at the moment from having that imported raw image be um, cached in a way that you could go back to the raw file, modify it some more, and it'll replace the stack <laughs> in the layer for you, right? Which is very, very nice because I have a back and forth workflow. This is similar, uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a similar thing from um, uh, Adobe Camera Raw to Photoshop, right? Because Photoshop doesn't open raw files. You knew that, right? You knew that, right? Photoshop doesn't actually open raw files. It's Camera Raw. Full set of metadata, IPTC, XMP, GPS, and DICOM metadata. The DICOM metadata is stuff for image, medical image processing. But full metadata support, reading and writing now, right? Oh, the CIE lab. Anyone know what these are? CIA lab, CIE, LCH, right? So we're doing a full set of, of lab and LCH support now. Um, well, what's cool, though, is, is that you can decompose and recompose to any of the lab and LCH, plus you can extract any of the channels. Fuzzy select, some of the tools now can begin to use LCH color modes when they're doing their selection before you were clamped to sRGB uh, as viewed. Now with the Gaggle change and the L Babel changes, we can do that. LCH can now be used instead of HSV and color selection tools. And some of the blend modes can be based on L if this is not, if this is all Greek to you, I'm happy to tell you more about it offline. I have to put everyone to sleep. Tomorrow. What's that? To booth 213 tomorrow. I'm sharing, we're, we've got Inkscape and GIMP in the same booth. I, that's where I'll be. Come talk to me about it. So what happened is, is that in the past couple of years, we've had a couple of crowdfunding um, efforts by uh, two pretty heavy duty uh, developers in the project. You can always donate to the GIMP project, but these guys are looking to support themselves fully through their crowdfunding efforts. So Oivin Koalas, which uh, is better known as Pippin uh, in the mailing lists and in IRC, he's the main guy responsible for Gaggle. One of the only, there's only Debarshi Raw is the other guy that's, or Ray that's doing the other. It's really like two guys that are working on all of the core of GIMP at the bottom of everything. Uh, but his latest bit of efforts have been working on multi-threading for Gaggle to improve the speed quite a bit. He's got a G-Cut video editor in Gaggle. Gaggle's kind of a, a node-based graph of image processing. You saw it, if you were here this morning, with Tom's nodes for laid out. It's a similar idea, and he actually uses Gaggle, uh, if, I if I recall correctly. Those were Gaggle nodes as well. So this is the same thing that's running GIMP on the back end. Uh, and then Jean Page, Page, is working on animation in GIMP, Zamarmat. And I have a, a link to that later. But a lot of his bug fixing in GIMP and Gaggle has been, um, over the last year, has been phenomenal. One out of five commits from the whole year last year was entirely him for bug fixes and, and enhancements in Gaggle and GIMP. There's no longer going to be years between major stable releases. We're going to be releasing on a much shorter cycle. And we'll be maintaining the stable and development branches in unison where it makes sense. So if there's features or bug fixes that were available in dev, we're not going to just throw away the last stable release. Those, those will get backported to the last stable release as we move forward, unless it's something that would require a complete regutting of that last stable release. And we'll wait for the uh, next point release. And we're starting to write these docs as soon as possible. A lot of bug fixes are coming up in 2.10 along with all those features that we saw, including things with like XCF deltas and the GIMP motion. The XCF deltas are going to make smaller XCF files. Right now, they're huge, huge files, especially in 16-bit or 32-bit integer or float. The file size balloons out quite a bit. GIMP 3.0, much later, um, it, it'll be a complete port to GTK 3, assuming we don't go to 4, but that's a conversation that people far smarter than I have to have first. All the new features from 2.10 will be there, and there'll be some, a bunch of refactoring and a bunch of API deprecation as we move forward. Kind of just sloughing off some old cruft to move into the future, and we can't keep being beholden to lots of really old things. The dark developers on this list, Mitch, Sean, L, Thomas, Manny, Oyvind, and Debarshi Ray, those are the main guys, like I said earlier, that literally go to work all day, come home, and then hack on GIMP for a few hours in the evening before they go to sleep. This is all the GIMP developers we have, mostly. Let that sink in, because everyone in this room raised your hand when I asked you if you used GIMP, right? And I bet you we could go out in the hallway and find a lot more people that do it. So we try, but we're extremely resource constrained at the moment. The bottom three, Michael Schumacher, Alex Prokodin, and myself, 
do ad administration of the project, PR, outreach. I write tutorials. Maybe you might have seen one or two of them. Um, manage the website and, and what have you. But that's all we have for the most part. There are some drive-by contributors, but if you work on an open source project, you'll learn that drive-by contributors are great for the few minutes that they're involved. And they're gone and someone has to take over managing those patches that they might have dumped in your lap, right? Which is an increased workload on the few people you do have left, which means they have less time to do more things for you. Oyvind Kolos is on a Patreon, currently trying to fund himself. Jean Page is, this is Zamar, one of the frames from Zamarmat, his film, uh, also has one as well, where he and Ariam Han are working on it. So, all the features that you just saw were literally done by roughly those six people on that other slide. And the reason that you waited six years since the last full release of the software was because there were only six guys doing it in the evenings to give you all the features that we've seen so far. So really my main crux here today, besides telling you that we don't hate you, we do love you, here's all the cool stuff we've done lately, is to ask you to get involved and to help us get to 3.0 and beyond with those new features. Now, are there many developers in the room that, that might consider hacking at GIMP? Raise your hand if you're a developer in some way. And would you consider it? Joining that project. More importantly, everyone that doesn't have their hand up when I ask that can still contribute a lot. Because if you, uh, had, meant, if you had noticed Ryan's comments earlier, uh, one of the first pillars in his comment was to make them aware, make people aware that there's a thing here with free software that you can use. I need this help. Code is only one line out of everything we need in this project that we need help with constantly. I need tutorials, right? It could be the greatest piece of software in the world if someone can't figure out how it makes sense to them to use, to help them do something cool, they're not gonna bother with it. I need to help evangelize that you can do something cool in some way with it, right? And so I need help with documentation, and this is easy. Documentation is easy. How does, how does Unsharp Mask work? Go look at it, figure it out. In a, in a few nights, you could write, you know, half a page that would explain in the manual how Unsharp Mask should work. That's a contribution that we could absolutely use. Tutorials. How did you do this cool thing? Matt Lee was up here with his, all of his material for his open movie. And one of the questions was, you know, if you gave me the Blender file, that it, along with all of the raw video file, I could maybe figure out why you might have made decisions to do things a certain way, AKA, it will help me to figure out why and how you did a thing. That's the essence of, of writing tutorials and documentation, to be quite honest. Evangelize and showcase works. That was something that Ryan also said. Show off those good things, right? If you have a great piece of art, even if you don't think so, post it. Tell people, hey, I used GIMP to make this. Right? I had, I had a, where'd she go? There. I used GIMP to make this. I did use GIMP to make that. That's a screenshot from my workstation. Show people that. Get out there and show them that. They don't know that. Right? Because most people's impression is, oh, I can make a, again, I can make a meme. That's what GIMP's good for. It's not good for professional work, whatever that means. Support other people that are using it. That should be a no-brainer. Someone has a question, try to help them. And if you can't. <clears throat> if you can't, point them to where they can. Like the community, which I try to help take care of. We have a few places for this. And at the very least, some feedback. Hey, did it work? Did it not? Why not? Be clear, tell us why. We'll do our best, we care, we wanna do that. We come back and say, these features are available, we need people to test them. Take five minutes and try to beat it up. If it crashes, let us know, right? We can't do this in a vacuum. This is any, any open source project, by the way. This is not just GIMP, but good solid feedback that makes sense and is targeted helps developers far more than you can imagine, far more than you think if you're not a developer. Then if you're a developer, you say, well, I could really use people to test this and give me some feedback and, and bug reporting. So. That's th a couple of thanks. Thank you guys for putting up with me. My voice gets monotonous when I start talking for a long time and it puts some people to sleep. I apologize. I'll try to vary it here in the last like five minutes just to ride it out on a high note at the very least. 
A thanks to Alex Prokodin, who I stole almost this entire set of, of images and user interface slides that are all in, in Russian, just, so yeah. Uh, Michael Schumacher, if you don't know him, this guy, is, he's got the heart of a saint, because he's on the front lines every day dealing with people that are mad, way mad, way more angry than you guys are, about GIMP. He is, and he's always nice, and he's always kind, and he's always reasonable. I've never seen the guy lose his patience, ever. It's amazing, especially for the crap a lot of people put him through. And then the rest of the GIMP team that I did not mention, there are other people that do small contributions over the years, and we carry around legacy members, um, Vile Patsy, Simon Budig, that's been here since, you know, almost the full 20 years, that, you know, had some small commits every here now and then and help out where they can. Um, I'm Pat David. <laughs> are there any questions? Come on, jump, jump, come on, come on. Feedback and bug reporting, how? What's the best way? Right now, Bugzilla. And there's an address for it on the website. It sucks. We're moving to GitLab with the rest of GNOME. Yeah. So you'll have a much, much better user interface for interacting with the developers uh, with features and bug requests. And non-bug uh, uh, feedback, uh, the forums? Yes, absolutely. Non-bug feedback, you can still give that on GitLab. Um, or, or on Bugzilla if you want to, IRC, or reach out to any, you can pat David at, at gimp.org. That would be, and I'll let the team know, they love hearing good things or bad things as long as it helps them make things better. Right. <laughs> um, so about, 20-ish years ago, there was a lot of alignment between uh, GTK and GIMP. How close is everybody still as far as that goes? I mean, back then it was, you know, the same, the exact same people were working on both yeah. projects full time. Yep. Is that still a thing or is it sort of separated a lot Yeah, it's more? weird too. Everyone knows what GTK stands for, right? Yeah. Everyone knows what GTK stands for? Yeah. I mean, so GTK and GNOME and GIMP it's were the, a it's package. It's the GIMP toolkit, right? <laughs> right? It was basically, they, Peter uh, uh, hated that we didn't have a UI to deal with and built GTK originally so that, uh, none. Because at least if there is, I haven't seen it with the GTK team. Okay. So the interaction between us on a daily basis with the GTK folks is not that much. Usually because we spend a lot of our time, like right now the main thing holding back the 2.10 release and a lot of the cool things that you're seeing is getting Gaggle finished. So we need to port all these things to Gaggle. Gaggle has nothing to do with GTK whatsoever. And the widgets that you're seeing are more or less standardized at the moment from the cool kit we're using. So no, not as much as I'd probably like to be involved in, but uh, that's just what I've seen from daily okay. interaction. Oh, uh, you had a question? I can repeat it if you just want to tell me it. The, uh, you mentioned the tutorial website. Yes. What's the address again? Gimp.org slash tutorials. Yes, some shameless self-promotion. Uh, P-I-X-L-S, pixels, dot us, U-S. It's a photography community specifically. But we've got a lot, of the dark table devs are there, the raw therapy devs are there, the digicam devs are there, there's a whole bunch of, all the, if it's photography related, somebody from one of the teams is hanging around there doing something. So if you have questions, we have a lot of users that have a lot of experience from a photographic standpoint. If you need to build a flyer, we might not be able to help. But if you come in there and ask about flyers as part of the GIMP team, I'm going to tell you specifically, hey, ask over here. They might have a better answer for you. So we have a lot of cross-pollination. So. But GIMP.org slash tutorials should be your reference. I've been trying to update that, by the way. There were, there were some tutorials on there from, no kidding, 20 years ago. And there's a, there was 50 tutorials I had to blow away because I couldn't track down the authors anymore to get clearance to release them. Because the new GIMP website is entirely CC by SA on all the content. So we're not publishing on the site unless it's f free to use and reuse. Um, and I couldn't get clearance from a lot of old tutorials, so I had to mark those separately and move them off. So we've made some headway. There's some new stuff there. Do you have a list so, of those if we would like to recreate them? I do, yes. If you go to the tutorial, gimp.org slash tutorials, at the very bottom of that list is a legacy tutorials link. 
And when you go there, you'll see all the old legacy tutorials. I would love if anyone wanted to go and grab an old tutorial and then redo it and freely license it for me with new images and new text. Perfect. Yeah, that would, that would absolutely help. Yes? Is anything on Open Collective or any kind of bounty program anywhere? We had tried that. I feel like we had tried that for, what was that for? Uh, yes, we had tried that. It, I got about half funded and then petered out so only half the work was ever done, but nothing else has been put on Open Collective yet. We don't really have a cohesive plan at the moment for how to move forward for funding to maybe move into more accelerated development. We would like to be able to reach a point where we can get at least one full-time dev and one full-time administrator, right? Someone to drive the boat, basically, and, and coordinate our efforts. We're trying, and we're not far from that at the moment, um, but we just have not gotten there just yet. But if you want to donate, gimp.org slash donating is always, uh, you basically write a check to the Gnome Foundation and just say it's for GIMP in the memo field, and we'll get it. Um, or come help, even better. Right, just spend a little extra time helping us triage bugs or, you know, sort some things. What do you think? You still think GIMP hates you? What are you, what are you written in? I'm sorry? What language are you written in? C. Still think GIMP hates you, maybe? Maybe a little less? Maybe you understand that we try, but sometimes you piss us off. I have a question, Pat. Yes. I really want to try 2.9.9. .9. Is there some newfangled packaging format, like an app image that I can get from somewhere? No. <laughs> By the way, if you do want to try a development build, which I highly recommend, when you go to the download page for GIMP now, gimp.org slash downloads, um, there is now a link at the top that says, this is all for stable GIMP, which is ancient. Click here, you go to the development section, you can get the development builds. And we have um, an app image and uh, flat pack. A, a flat pack. What's some other fancy new word that everyone likes? Snap. I, I hear know. that one a lot. Do we have a snap? I don't know. I'm not going to mention. Maybe we don't. But you can go get the development version now, which is the sexy, fancy, you know, you don't have to look at my cat, but this sexy, fancy version right here, this is available right now for everybody. Uh, Windows, OS X, or just about any flavor. If you don't want to build it yourself, there is a, an app image and a flat pack. And uh, actually, I mean, what did I get last night? You got. Uh, I got the flat pack. You got and Andrea's app, app image. image. That's right. Yeah. I believe his name on GitHub is A Ferrero, yep. nine something something. Yeah. Andreas Ferrero. It's wild the people you meet in open source. I, I met him in, at LGM one year. Uh, he's packaging GIMP development version. Uh, along with a bunch of plugins and things like that. His full-time job is a, he's a PhD scientist at CERN. Wow, all right, man, you must have some time blowing holes in the universe. But we don't hate you, and we're trying. The problem is that the, pro the, the project's not dead. We're not even on life support. We're happily trucking along, and honestly, if nothing changes, we got 10 people that are gonna be happily trucking along, still trying to make a cool image editor with cool features. If you rely on it, or think you'd like to see it do other cool stuff, come and join us. Even if you just hop into the IRC room and hang out, right? It doesn't take much. A lot of us doing a little bit ends up with a really awesome thing, which is how we got here now with GIMP. A lot of people put a lot of, little bit of time in all through the years, and we've ended up at a really neat product, I think, so far, or at least neat project. Any other questions? Come on. Yes, so if you come and write, you can write in the Gaggle language to do filters. So if you're looking to add filters to the project for us, you can work within Pippin's Gaggle framework to write those filters, right? Yeah, kind of. I, but I mean, you can also extend it with uh, scripting, like ScriptFoo, which is a tiny scheme. You could do Python if you wanted to. I'm more of a ScriptFoo person because that's what I cut my teeth on a long time ago, scripting again. But you could use Python as well. And, I, well, we actually talked about redoing the interface in JavaScript. <laughs> or TypeScript, whatever name, I don't know, I can't keep up, I'm too old. Um, but there's other things you can do. 
I, I can't stress that enough. If you can't code, come and hang out. Write me, uh, write me, a f uh, two, maybe write me 500 words about some feature that you like. That's it, a blog post for us. Every little tiny bit helps, right? Take a photo when you thought it came out cool, share it with me, let me know. I'll send it to me personally at paddavid at gimp.org. I'll make sure it gets out to the proper channels and people see it and get credit for it. And we start priming this engine of there's cool things you can do. Just take a little bit of effort to try it and maybe be positive. Don't be mean. We have enough of that already. Any other questions? What do you think? I want you to leave thinking we don't hate you. Does anyone still think GIMP hates you? I'll come sit in your lap and you do. <laughs> Why do you think people hate GIMP or the GIMP project? Spend 10 minutes doing support for us uh, on any platform. Yeah, that's any support platform though. Mm, I feel like we have a particularly interesting group of users. Yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. But come help me. Then uh, if you can just make five other people not think that we hate them, I call that a win. I call it a win and I'm looking at a room with, I don't know how many people are in here. And nobody's lynched me yet. Nobody's asked me about changing the name. <laughs> That's the thing I'm probably the most impressed about, I, I to be honest. I remember once trying to explain GIMP to a handicapped person. Yeah. It's not my best friend. Yeah, it's no fun. Here, look, use my photo. It helps. Yeah. It puts it in better context. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? Feel free, anything at all? No? Oh, Lord. He's asking, yeah, he's asking me the Project Gimp Shop if it's keeping up with what we're doing. Um, holy mackerel. Anyone know what Gimp Shop is? It was an attempt to give Gimp the uh, similar UI to Photoshop. That's right. The original author of GIMP Shop lost the domain. A squatter bought it and filled it full of malware. Do not go to GIMP Shop. Don't even bother to look it up. Just, just don't. No. He's, and he's since tried and he tried for like a year to get it fixed and he just couldn't. And he finally said, I'm sorry. So our current stance is don't go anywhere near it. No, the application binary should be considered uh, uh, poisoned at this point. Yeah, I wouldn't trust it at all. And they, and they bank on our name. We don't really have a trademark on the name. We haven't quite figured out how we want to do that yet. So it's hard for us to enforce those kinds of things through any kind of trademark policy or something like that, despite repeated calls to the Free Software Foundation about how they manage their GNU. But Maybe that should be something else you need. Yes. Yes, or just, you know, somebody that can spend 50 hours to help us with some trademark and, and questions, you know, how we should, how we should manage that. Uh, anything else? Go try 2.9 if you haven't. Look, my email's right there, pattdavidatgimp.org. You, you can write, write me directly if you want. If you have a question, you can write me directly. I'll answer every question you get. It's better if you ask it on pixels.us, though. I don't have a pixels.us slide. But go to pixels.us and it's a little bit better. <laughs>